Welcome everyone to another episode of Dissertation in 90 Days, your go-to podcast for all things dissertation, academic writing, and beyond. It's fantastic to have you join us today, whether you're on your daily commute, taking a well-deserved break, or perhaps even in the midst of a writing session, this episode promises to be a beacon of light in the often murky waters of academic writing. Today, we're peeling back the layers on a topic that, for many, feels just a tad bit daunting. Academic writing. Yes, those two words can send shivers down the spine of even the most seasoned scholars. But here's the thing. At the heart of every academic journey is the transformative power of words. These words aren't just ink on paper or pixels on a screen. They're the building blocks of your academic and professional future. Our mission for today, and really for every episode, is to break down the complex, the confusing, and the complicated. Academic writing, with all its rules, structures, and expectations, might seem like a mountain too steep to climb. But what if I told you that it's more like a series of manageable hills? That's right. Today, we're not just talking about academic writing in the abstract. We're diving deep into practical steps, actionable advice, and real-world strategies that you can put into practice right now, today. So, whether you're staring at a blank page, wrestling with a literature review, or navigating the final revisions of your dissertation, this episode is for you. Let's demystify academic writing together, turning what might seem like an insurmountable task into a series of achievable, even enjoyable steps. Stay tuned as we embark on this journey together, making the process of writing not just bearable, but remarkably rewarding. Welcome to Dissertation in 90 Days. Let's get started. All right, let's dive right in with a question to get those gears turning. What is the one thing that, if you knew it, could change the way you approach academic writing? Think about it. Academic writing isn't just a task to check off your PhD to-do list. It's a key that unlocks the door to contributing to your field, sharing your insights, and making a name for yourself in the scholarly community. The essence of academic writing is its power to contribute to knowledge. Every paragraph you write, every reference you cite, and every argument you make adds a building block to the towering structure of your field. It's how new ideas are introduced, discussed, and either accepted or refined. It's more than writing. It's engaging in a conversation that spans generations and geographies. Now, it's no secret that the journey through academic writing is fraught with challenges. Many doctoral students grapple with imposter syndrome, feeling like they don't quite belong in the academic world. Others hit the infamous writer's block, staring down a blinking cursor on an all-too-empty page. And let's not forget the hurdle of navigating feedback, which can sometimes feel more like a maze than a straight path to improvement. So how do we tackle these challenges? Here's a practical tip. Start with a mind map. This isn't just any old tip, it's a game changer. A mind map helps you visually organize your thoughts, themes, and connections between ideas. It's like laying out all the pieces of a puzzle on the table before you start putting them together. This approach doesn't just clarify your thoughts, it sparks creativity, highlights relationships between concepts, and, crucially, it can break the back of that dreaded writer's block. Creating a mind map can be as simple as grabbing a piece of paper and a pen, or as tech-savvy as using one of the many software tools out there. Start with your main idea or question in the center, and let your thoughts branch out into sub-themes, questions, and references. Before you know it, you'll have a blueprint for your writing, and the page won't seem quite so empty anymore. Remember, the goal of academic writing is not just to fill pages, 
It's to fill gaps in knowledge, to challenge, to question, and to contribute. And with the right approach, you can do just that. So, let's keep that mind map in mind as we move forward, shall we? In this next segment, let's unwrap the core elements that transform good academic writing into great academic writing, clarity, coherence, and conciseness. Picture these as the foundation stones of a bridge. Without them, the bridge to understanding between you and your readers, well, it just wouldn't hold up. Let me tell you a story that brings this to life. Imagine two scholars, both experts in their field. One writes in a way that's dense and impenetrable, packed with jargon and complex sentences that loop and twist like a maze. The other uses clear, straightforward language, guiding readers with a logical flow and concise arguments. Despite their equal expertise, it's the second scholar whose work resonates, whose ideas spread, and who ultimately makes a greater impact in their field. This tale of two scholars illustrates the power of clarity, coherence, and conciseness. So, how do we build this bridge in our own writing? First up, clarity. This is all about making your ideas as clear as crystal. Before you even start writing, outline your main points. This roadmap will not only keep you on track, but also ensure that each section of your writing has a clear purpose. An outline is like a skeleton that supports the body of your work, giving it structure and shape. Next, coherence. This is the glue that holds your writing together, ensuring that your ideas flow smoothly from one to the next. Transitional phrases are your best friends here. Phrases like, furthermore, however, and in contrast, signal to your readers how your ideas connect, guiding them through your argument as effortlessly as if they were floating down a river. Always keep the logical flow of your ideas in mind, building your argument step by step. And then there's conciseness. The art of being concise is about saying what you need to say, no more, no less. Avoid the temptation to pad your writing with unnecessary jargon or redundancy. Instead, challenge yourself to express your ideas as simply and directly as possible. This doesn't mean stripping away complexity or nuance, but rather making complex ideas accessible and digestible. Here's a tip that never fails. Write with your reader in mind. Picture a real person trying to understand your work. What questions might they have? What might confuse them? By anticipating your reader's needs, you can tailor your writing to be as clear, coherent, and concise as possible. Remember, the goal isn't just to write, it's to be understood. By focusing on clarity, coherence, and conciseness, you're not only respecting your reader's time and intelligence, you're also ensuring that your ideas have the impact they deserve. So as you sit down to write, think of that bridge you're building and make every stone count. Let's delve into the heartbeat of academic writing, research, and evidence. Picture this. You're a detective in a vast library, each book and article a clue to unraveling your big case. In academic writing, your case is your thesis, and the clues are the research and evidence you gather to support it. Without solid evidence, your arguments are just opinions floating in the academic ether. Navigating the world of research might seem daunting, but it's really about knowing where to look and how to look. Start with academic databases specific to your field. These are treasure troves of peer-reviewed articles, books, and conference proceedings. But remember, not all treasures are equal. You need to evaluate your sources for their credibility, relevance, and currency. Ask yourself, is this source from a respected publication? Is it recent enough to still be relevant? Now, finding your sources is one thing, but weaving them into your writing to build a compelling argument is another ball game. This is where properly integrating and citing your evidence comes into play. Direct quotes, paraphrasing, and summarizing are all tools in your kit. Use them wisely to support your points while maintaining your own voice, and always, always cite your sources. This not only gives credit where it's due, but also strengthens your argument by showing you're standing on the shoulders of giants. Here's an actionable tip. Keep a research journal. This can be a digital document, a spreadsheet, or a good old-fashioned notebook. Use it to track your sources, jot down notes, and reflect on how each piece 
fits into your puzzle. This journal becomes your investigation diary, a place where you can see the big picture of your research and how it supports your thesis. Remember, research and evidence are what transform your writing from a collection of personal insights into a rigorous academic work. They're what convince your readers that your argument is worth considering. So embrace your inner detective and start gathering those clues with confidence. Now, let's turn our attention to a part of academic writing that often gets a mixed reception, revisions and feedback. Think of your first draft as raw clay. It's got potential, sure, but it's the revisions that shape this potential into a polished piece of scholarship. This process isn't just about correcting grammar or fixing typos. It's an opportunity to refine your ideas, clarify your arguments, and enhance the overall coherence of your work. Approaching revisions with a positive mindset can transform them from a daunting task into a valuable part of your writing journey. Imagine each round of feedback as a layer of polish, making your work shine a little brighter. It's crucial, though, to incorporate this feedback effectively. Not all advice will align with your vision, and that's okay. The key is to listen, consider, and then apply the feedback that truly resonates with and enriches your work. Here are a few practical tips to make the revision process more productive. First, take breaks between drafts. Let your writing breathe for a bit. Stepping away from your work allows you to return with fresh eyes and a new perspective. Sometimes the best insights come when you're not actively looking for them. Second, use feedback. Selectively, remember, feedback is a tool, not a directive. Weigh each piece of advice carefully and apply what genuinely improves your document. It's your work after all, and you know its essence better than anyone. And third, peer reviews and writing groups. Engaging with a community of fellow writers can be incredibly supportive. Sharing your work with peers provides diverse perspectives that can highlight strengths and areas for improvement you might not have seen. Plus, discussing your work with others can spark new ideas and approaches. Embracing revisions and feedback is about more than just making your work better. It's about growing as a scholar and a writer. Each round of edits, each piece of feedback is a step forward in your academic journey. So let's not shy away from this process. Instead, let's see it as what it truly is, an opportunity to excel, to refine, and ultimately to succeed. As we wrap up today's episode, let's briefly revisit the journey we've began together. We've explored the foundational elements of effective academic writing, clarity, coherence, and conciseness. We've navigated through the critical role of research and evidence, and we've embraced the process of revisions and feedback as essential steps towards refining our work. Remember, mastering academic writing is not a destination. It's a journey of continuous learning, improvement, and yes, sometimes even struggle. But it's within this journey that we find our greatest growth. I encourage you to apply the practical tips shared today. Create that mind map, keep a research journal, take breaks between drafts, and engage with peer reviews. These strategies are your compass on the path to academic success. Let's close with this thought. The perseverance you show today, the words you write, and the knowledge you contribute, they all shape the bright future that lies ahead. The challenges of academic writing are real, but so are the rewards. Keep pushing forward, keep refining your craft, and remember, the impact of your work extends far beyond the pages of your dissertation. For those looking to dive deeper and accelerate their journey, I highly recommend checking out the playbook How to Get Your Dissertation Approved in Six Months or Less by Dr. Anthony Robinson, who remarkably completed two dissertations in just six months. This playbook is a treasure trove of insights, strategies, and practical advice to guide you through your academic writing endeavors. You can download it from writerser.com slash playbook. Thank you for joining me today on Dissertation in 90 Days. Here's to your success, your perseverance, and the incredible journey 
of academic writing that lies ahead. Keep writing, keep striving, and remember, the future is written by those who dare to put pen to paper.